You ready? I'm going to be on camera. You ready? Hi everybody, welcome to this video for Biology, Chapter 1, Section 3. And in this video, I want to start with a story. You see, one of my hobbies is cooking, and I'm starting to learn how to cook bread. Problem is, I'm not very good at it yet. See, my bread comes out nice and flat and dense like this, and, well, somebody likes it, but uh, it's not the best bread to eat. So I wanted to figure out how to make a better bread. Well, I know that the bread that I like to eat is light and fluffy because it has air pockets in it. And if you look here at the bread that I've made, you can see that there are some air pockets, but they're small. Uh, and I want to fig figure out how to make a better loaf of bread. So in order to do that, I decided I wanted to design an experiment. Okay, so here's where the experiment begins. I know that yeast is an active ingredient in bread, and so I'm going to use that information to help formulate my hypothesis for my experiment. Remember, a hypothesis is nothing more than a proposed answer to the scientific question. In this case, our scientific question is, how can we make the bread rise more? Proposed answer to that, or my hypothesis, which is when more yeast is added, the bread will rise more. And I'm using some information to formulate my, my hypothesis. Uh, I'm using information I already know about yeast. For example, as a science teacher and as a biologist, I know a little bit about yeast. I know that if you do an experiment like the one you can see here on the screen with the bottle and the balloon, you can actually capture the carbon dioxide gas that the yeast is actually creating. And I know that when people make bread, that carbon dioxide gas gets trapped in little air bubbles inside the bread mixture, and that's what makes bread fluffy and it's what makes bread rise. So I'm using information to formulate my hypothesis. I'm not taking a stab in the dark. I'm not guessing that yeast is probably the answer. I actually have some information that's leading me to believe that my hypothesis is a good one. So here we go. The thing that I'm actually manipulating in my experiment is called the variable. In this case, it's the yeast. Um, it's the experimental condition that I'm purposefully changing. In this case, one loaf of bread is going to get uh, one tablespoon of yeast. The other loaf of bread is going to get two tablespoons of yeast. And that's my variable. But everything else, I hold constant. Constants are things that uh, help control for anything else that would uh, lead us to make some invalid conclusions about our hypothesis. So I'm going to use the same amount of flour, the same type of flour, the same amount of uh, sugar and, and milk and oil and some of the other ingredients and hold those all constant. That way, in the end, when I'm making my conclusions and I want to evaluate my hypothesis, I'm not dealing with all different kinds of variables. The only variable that I'm dealing with is the yeast. So while we're talking about variables, let's talk about two different kinds of variables. The first is uh, the independent variable, and that's the experimental thing that's actually being manipulated. And in this case, we've already talked about that. That's, that's the yeast in my experiment. So that's the independent variable. Um, the other kind of variable is the dependent variable. It's dependent, or we think it's dependent, on the change in the independent variable. So in this case, the rising of the bread is my dependent variable. It's the thing that's hopefully going to happen that I'm going to measure and, and take some data on to help evaluate my hypothesis. So two different kinds of variables. Their names are kind of the same. Um, but when we design our experiments in class, we'll make sure we're using the right term to refer to those two different kinds of variables. So here we go. Uh, I'm holding more things constant. I'm letting the, the bread rise in a similar environment. I'm putting the two different loaves in, in the pans that are the same size so that I hold that constant. They're obviously being baked in the same oven at the same temperature. So everything else other than the yeast is being held completely constant so that, so that again, in, in the end, I can actually make a conclusion about um, the yeast. So here it is. There's my loaves of bread. Uh, the ones on the left-hand side are the one tablespoon yeast mixture. The ones on the right-hand side are the right, or are the uh, two tablespoon yeast mixture. And this is my data. This is my quantitative data. Quantitative data are data in the form of numbers. So I actually took a ruler and I measured in centimeters how far the bread had risen to its final height um, after baking. And you can see that the one tablespoon yeast rose an average between the two loaves of 3.75 centimeters, and that the two tablespoon yeast bread rose to a final height of 4.75 centimeters. So. As far as my hypothesis is concerned, this data supports my hypothesis is that when more yeast is added, the bread rises more, although it's not that big of a difference. It looks like a big difference here on my chart, um, but if you know how big a, uh, a centimeter is, uh, about the width of a uh, fingernail, um, that's not very much. So by doubling the amount of yeast, I only got one more centimeter of rise in the bread. So that's part of our analysis. You have to look at the numbers and say, yeah, well, 4.75 is bigger than 3.75. So I 
did actually get more rising of the bread. But how much more really is that? And in this case, it's not much more. So I'd have to do the experiment again to actually get some more information on why it's not rising quite as high as I thought it would. Here's some different kind of data. I cut open the bread, and I actually uh, was able to evaluate some qualitative data. Remember, quantitative data is data in the form of numbers. Qualitative data are things that you can actually see or smell or hear. Um, and in this case, you can simply evaluate the form of the bread. You can see that between the two different experimental loaves of bread, the amount of fluffiness or the amount of air pockets in there that make bread appetizing to eat uh, isn't all that different. So when it comes to actually making bread that I want to eat, um, doubling the amount of yeast actually didn't solve that problem, although it did make the bread rise on average a little bit more. So that's quite qualitative data. And qualitative data um, has its role in experiments, um, but really quantitative data, um, in this case the amount that the bread actually rose, um, allowed us to you know, make that graph and analyze things a little bit better. So I'm not quite sure exactly what I learned in the ex this experiment. I have to do it again to you know, evaluate my hypothesis uh, once again. But the important thing here is that I followed the, the correct scientific investigation cycle. It all started at the top of the cycle here, where I made some observations. I knew about yeast. I knew that my bread was deficient. I didn't want to eat it because it wasn't light and fluffy. And those were my observations. I then formed my hypothesis. And again, it's not a guess. I used what I know about bread and yeast to actually make an informed uh, hypothesis. I then tested that hypothesis with my experiment. Remember, I held all other things constant, all other variables constant, except for the yeast. Then I analyzed my data with that graph. Turns out, yeah, when you add more yeast, you get more rise in the bread, at least according to my data. But then when I started to evaluate the results, uh, when I split the loaves in half and actually looked at them, um, I realized that they really actually didn't change all that much. They're still pretty dense um, loaves of bread. And I still have some more changes that I need to make in my recipe to actually make my bread better. Of course, that turns us back to the top of the cycle, which is more observations, which form more hypotheses. And you go around and around um, until you have so much evidence that you can actually formulate some kind of theory about what's going on. In this case, some kind of theory about how to make the best kind of bread. So you'll use the same kind of scientific investigation cycle when you're formulating your experiments in class as well.